Hello once again, goblins and ghouls. I am James Phoenix, and this is another Halloween Rise from the Airwaves. This is part two of our look at the Halloween Town series of films. Fair warning, this one is likely going to get profane and angry. You have been warned. Small children should um, learn to um, should watch to learn new language. And <laughs> no. Small children should go and watch the movies and not listen to this review. Indeed. That's it. Joining me are the same folks you saw oh. in part one, and they include from the Gaming Grotto, Geeky Girl. Yo. From Showtime, Marcus Shadow. Showtime. And from whatever she shows up for, the Queen of Hearts. Hey. All righty. So we're going to pick this up. Um, if you saw our previous review, we looked at Halloween Town, the first film, and Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. We're now going to be looking at the second two films in the four-film series. The first of which we're going to look out came out in 2004 and is called Halloween Town High. Uh, this is where the series gets a little more Marnie-centric. Uh, it is the final film to feature Kimberly J. Brown as the character of Marnie, and also the final film to feature the character of Sophie, played by Emily J. Ro uh, played by uh, Emily Rosk, at all. Boo. Call it Halloween Town Sigh. Ha. Angst. Anyway. Uh, Halloween Town Breaking Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Really Pretty much what it was. <laughs> Halloween Town Breaking Down. Ah, <laughs> there you go. So the premise of this film is that at the end of the last film, of course, Marnie managed to open a permanent portal between the worlds rather than one that was only open on Halloween Town. And so uh, the the people in power had to address this, specifically the people in Halloween Town. Um, and so Marnie, at the beginning of the film, is home with her family and find out that she has a meeting scheduled with the Halloween Town Council. Something that... Guffin number one. Um, that's something we did not know existed up until now because they had a mayor. Apparently there's a council. Did he have power... Did they have power over Calabar? Was he in charge of them? How did this work? Are they, were, were they appointed after Calabar was destroyed? We don't know. Plot hole. Maybe a council after um after he was destroyed because the whole one person mayor thing didn't work out. This Maybe this true. movie should be called Halloween Town Three: The MacGuffin Principle. Nah. <laughs> so the premise of the film is that Marnie, in a meeting with the Halloween Town Council, in an attempt to convince them that the portal should remain open, inadvertently bets all the Cromwell magic. How she has the authority to do that, I don't know. Uh, Aggie actually mentions that at one point, the fact that she didn't have the authority to do that, so therefore they're fine. <laughs> Yet, apparently, the, this supposed council doesn't give two monkey craps about authority. Yeah. So, they will not respect your authority. No, no, they won't. So They don't even respect their own authority. This is true. So, inadvertently betting the Cromwell magic, Marty bets that she can take a group of teenagers from Halloween Town and integrate them into a mortal high school to prove that humans are far more tolerant of creatures and the people unlike them now than they were a thousand years ago when this whole setup was put in place. The answer is, if this were the real world, no, they would not be, but this is a Disney movie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Moni takes a group of, uh, or I should say Grandma Aggie brings a group of Halloween Town students uh, to Marnie's high school in her tiny little VW Bug car that is much larger on the inside than it is on the outside. Car, clown car, cough. Although, as pointed out with the characters, luckily she did not bring the flying school bus. See, Aggie's smarter than they give, them, give her credit for. Mm-hmm. They also have like I think a thing to change their appearances or whatever. Yes, they're all yeah, wearing human they're, skins. They're all wearing magical costumes that hide their various actual appearances. Uh, the students from Halloween Town include, in no particular order, an ogre with one eighth tree giant on his mother's side, a troll, a werewolf, troll. a fairy, uh, a witch, and a warlock. In addition to Marty. Oh, and also a, a swamp monster. Can't forget him. <laughs> swamp monster. <laughs> well, a little the creature from the Black Lagoon looking dude. Yeah, I know. So, I don't remember him at all. Yeah, like green skinned dude. When you say swamp monster, I'm thinking more of like a clay face thing. You should be thinking a swamp thing. But anyway. Yeah. 
Swamp Thing. Sorry. So, effectively, they are in human disguise, and they are enrolled at Marty's school, explained away as being exchange students from Canada. Hi, Tiff. Hi. <laughs> I find it funny I just, that they're supposed to be exchange students. I just saw the troll students. the other day, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I find it kind of funny. They're supposed to be exchange students from Canada. Not a single one of them says A the entire movie. Or I do find some. I, as stereotypical as uh, Americans make Canadians look really, uh, like in uh, TV shows and that, I do find that I myself say A sometimes at the end of sentences. Do you say the like word? Like I just did a minute ago. Do you yeah. say? Do you say the word? Apl- As it is, it's true. Not not well, quite to the extent that other yeah. nationalities do it, but it is true that Canadians do say a quite a bit. They end their sentences with it. I should know. Half my family is Canadian. Oh really? Where mm-hmm. from? <laughs> I, 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 will, <laughs> I will talk to you about this later, Tiff. But yes. <laughs> okay then. Half Canadian, half like <laughs> um, Asianese. <laughs> Shocking revelations here on the X Pound. Moving along, uh, effectively they established the students at the school, but there is some concern, uh, specifically in relation to a group uh, formerly known as the Knights of the Iron Dagger, who were some ancient group of knights that intentionally persecuted creatures back in the day. MacGuffin number two. Right. So the creatures are enrolled at the school with Aggie managing to get a job as a teacher and befriending the local principal, Principal Flanagan. Uh, Phil Flanagan, to be exact. And uh, she effect- effectively starts off teaching science, then moves to history, and then eventually phys ed after she can't stop herself using magic in all the classes. And because any controversy, interracial relationship. Yeah. Because Principal is, is a black guy. Yes. I don't know why that was relevant, but okay. Yeah, why it's, it's Disney. I had to mention the controversial interracial relationship. Okay. Then. Not that controversial, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. This from the Canadian Asian. <laughs> <laughs> there is logic in what she says. Hmm. Anyway, so I mean, it'd be worse if like a troll dated like the freaking swamp, you know, or something like that. The troll almost. Well, they, did, they did have the troll and the warlock, so yeah. Yeah, that almost happened. Anyway, so eventually they integrate the students into the school, and hilarity ensues, um, as you might expect. You know, they. Uh, Aggie creates a special little hideout for them inside of a locker because ma- you know, because magic. Mm-hmm. And effectively, uh, Marty tries to get them to integrate with the students, but doesn't have all that much luck because they're only integrating with each other. Yeah. Uh, she finally manages to convince them to start joining some clubs. Uh, the werewolf joins the football team. The uh, wood nymph fairy chick joins the uh, gardening club, etc., etc. Uh, at the same time, there have been some uh, appearances of these supposed knights of the Iron Dagger. Uh, a giant Iron Dagger drawn in what I assume was chalk was found on a sidewalk outside the building. Um, there's an incident at the mall where the, all the, the teens are hanging out, and all of a sudden some bullies get involved, and then there's some purple smoke, and an Iron Dagger is found plunged into a pumpkin. And some various other things. And by the way, with respect to the mall incident, that, that just proves how fucking stupid Marnie is. And Aggie for that matter, but more probably more Marnie because Aggie doesn't really live in the mortal realm. Of the fact that okay, she's they're supposed to be keeping low so to, so as not to expose themselves, as it were, because they're in their human disguises. Marnie walks through a crowded mall like a friggin' chaperone and basically screams out, "Hey, I've got monsters here!" <laughs> I'm like. Really, Marty? Really? You're just going to start yelling out, by the way, you have to maintain human customs. Who the fuck says that to Canadians? <laughs> Canadians oh, are my God. And then she doesn't bother to explain before or after the incident of, oh, you shouldn't get too offended by the way he, what, you know, by the Halloween stuff, because it's not so much that the humans are trying to make fun of the Halloween town people. It's the fact that they don't know any better. These monsters are kind of cool, so they try to hype it up and they want to have fun, and they think it's scary. They're not making fun, whereas the Halloween Town people think, oh, they're making fun of us, so therefore humans suck and they, you know, humans should be destroyed kind of thing. And that just uh, that just ruins what I think is supposed to be a commentary on, um, on discrimination and on racism and stuff. It's just ruined by the fact that 
Everybody else is so stupid! It's kind of like nail on the head kind of thing over and over. It's more like they're so stupid, they don't see what it is, and you don't get the message out. Because it's blatantly obvious, no, you're getting it wrong. That's not what it is, and no one is correcting them. Because Marnie's that retarded. I'm just like, oh my god. You could have at least made Marnie more intelligent. But no, no, you made her the stupid teenage girl. That got like, in over her head. Obvious signs like all over the place, and they don't see it. Yeah, and it's like there's no one there to explain to them, again, that their humans aren't making fun of Halloween on people. That's just the way they perceive the monsters. Mm -hmm. Between perception and making fun of someone. And it's just like, oh my god. Pretty much. So as these incidents begin to surmount, the Halloween Town Council uh, begins to become a little bit nervous about this whole situation. And uh, some of the some of these students elect to go home, whether by their own choice or by their parents' choice. And this leaves um and and I should mention this is also um well, after this uh only a few other students are left, including um, Ethan Dalloway, uh, who was the son of uh, Edgar Dalloway, who was the head of the council, um, and also the troll, and the werewolf, and the uh, ogre, uh, where some of the others that were established, just including the swamp monster, go home. Okay, chick. Really? I didn't think anybody went home. No, a few of them went home. Oh. And the fairy chick, she went home. The fairy chick went home, yes. The wood nymph. Um, the only one that went home? Her and the swamp monster. They went home. Fair enough. So the next day at school, um, as things are kind of going on, um, the magical hideout in the locker is broke, found broken into at one point, and uh, this, is also, this also leads to the creatures going home. This is a related event. And uh, one of the witches, Cassie, uh, was kidnapped and disappeared after Marty left her alone in the room that had already been broken into. Yeah, but to be fair, she didn't – and logically, it makes sense she didn't suspect anyone that could actually get in there because, let's face it, only people from Halloween Town can get in there. And so she, and so all the evidence points to someone broke the locker open, but there was no evidence to point to someone actually got into the magical room. And the fact that the locker was broken open, as I believe Marnie pointed out – points to the fact that it was a non-Halloween Town person who broke the locker open, which means, logically speaking, why would you think anyone got in there? Because it was in there. So therefore, she well, no one got in here. You're safe here. Just stay here because the humans can't get to you while you're here. Mm -hmm. It's logical. Makes yeah, but sense. she seems like, kind of incompetent by herself. She should have been left, like, even if, True. like, not to be kidnapped, but, like, just to, like, she she didn't seem safe and stable and emotionally like, ready, able to just be by herself right now. Right, I mean, I'm not saying leaving her alone was the wisest course of action. I'm just saying, logically speaking, it kind of makes sense where Marnie is coming from, where why she would feel that the room is safe. But I'm, I'm but I'm pretty sure they got in there and the room was trashed. No, the room was fine. That was the reason why in there and there was no evidence that yeah. anybody ever got into the room. The room was fine. I just think she left the wrong person in charge of the room. Fair enough. Yeah. Anywho, so effectively things slowly get worse um, until it, it is revealed about uh, two-thirds of the way through the movie at a little meeting. Uh, at, after at the house, after most people are gone, we see Ethan leave the house and kind of run away. And we find him later on at the school in Principal Flanagan's office where we find out that Principal Flanagan is the last remaining knight of the Iron Dagger, and he's the one that's been causing all the trouble, but only because he was informed of his supposed knight heritage by Edgar Dalloway, who is a bigot and a racist of the worst kind, and believes that humans are, you know, filthy muggle people, and effectively the portal needs to be closed permanently forever so they can be cut off from them. He's basically Calabar. Kind of. Except with more authority. And do bear in mind, this is the last movie of the four movie series that actually has subtlety in their villains. Well, we'll talk about that. Um, so Edgar Dalloway appears and says, yeah, basically I'm kind of the bad guy in charge. And Luke's like, you trapped Cassie. Because Luke finds uh, – Luke, wrong guy. His real name is Luke. Sorry. Um, well, Lucas. Um, Ethan finds Cassie in his witch's glass. Shock of shocks. 
and realizes that's why he runs away. Realizes that his father put her there and confronts him about this because he's not totally in agreement with this whole deal. Although he does reveal he's the one that's put the dagger in the pumpkin at the mall. And so after this, all this little revelation, and Edgar says, you know, we're going to finish this off. Um, the next day at school, uh, Aggie's uh, new magic bag that she has that is effectively a walking lizard thing. Um, goes into Principal Flanagan's office and reveals that he is the supposed uh, knight of the Iron Dagger, to which Aggie tells him off and walks the hell away. No, they have angry sex on the desk, don't you remember? Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah and at this point, there is the Halloween festival, and it's like Halloween night at this point. And I would just like to point out the glaring, illogical decisions that they made here and the only reason they did this i think is because for whatever reason they couldn't get the actress for sophie back but it's like okay the last two movies established that sophie is a powerful with matt raw magic she has not been really trained but she's powerful b she is the most astute one of all of them she is magically attuned she can you know tell when shit's going wrong and stuff and you have a night attack on school grounds, you have someone who can apparently get into the magic room and kidnap people, and the one person you bring you don't bring is the magical dowsing rod. What? <laughs> yeah. Sophie would have been the first person. I would have been like, "Girl, you're coming with me," because we. It's like, no, we're gonna go without her and go get fucked up on our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smart move. And, can, and you would think she would have shown up on her own, considering in the last movie we saw she had convinced Dylan to get on the broomstick illegally and fly there to warn her mother of danger. Exactly. And we also find the fact that even in this movie, assuming that Marnie is, let's say, 18 years old in this movie, that would mean if you did some math in your head that for the entire movie, because uh, Gwen at one point cast a spell with Aggie and Marnie to put, go into the witch's glass to try to cast <coughs> down through the world of witch's glasses or whatever the hell, however the hell that works. Which means that assuming that Marnie is 18, that means that Sophie is somewhere in the range of 13 to 14 and is home by herself for the duration of the movie. She doesn't go to school because she's a punk, you know? She does drugs and stuff. Which we'd also like to point out, the really lame, with no nothing to back it up reason they give for Sophie not being here is because Gwen forbids her to from leaving the house. It's like, Really? And even in the house scenes, she's not there. So where is she if she's supposed to be under house arrest? No, she was there in a couple of the house scenes. Not all of them, but a few. Still, she was, like, forbidden from leaving the house. I'm like, really? That's the best you could come up with? You're grounded? She's a fucking witch! Being grounded doesn't do anything for her! <laughs> Don't you know she lives in the cupboard under the stairs? Ah! But, oh, that pissed me off so much because I, I liked Sophie. She was probably my favorite character of the of the um, movie movies. She's a good character, I agree. And I was I was waiting for that character development that where she kind of starts to blossom and she gets more power. She learns how to use her power and stuff. And I was like, oh, I want to see her when she becomes like a witch, like Marnie, where they can like fight together. And it's like. Nope, you're off doing other shit and being grounded. It's like, really? Yep. So she, if she was in the movie, then that's even more blasphemous. It's like, you had her there. You paid her to be in the movie and did fuck all with her. Yep. It's like, oh my god. I think Don't even just... get me started on Dylan. I will talk about him at the end of the movie. Yeah, we she were... wasn't really there. It could have been a, re a repeating gif, you know? Ha. Um, so. Oh my god. Effectively, the Halloween party, uh, the Halloween festival comes around where the exchange kids from Halloween Town plan to open a haunted house. But in this particular haunted house, they're going to actually show what the creatures are actually like in their real lives. Um, Marnie creating the haunted house with her magic. Um, naturally, this concept kind of bombs. And uh, but we should also point out Marnie has a human boyfriend at this point who knows that she's a witch. Yes, unfortunately, he showed up at her house with flowers and Gwen kind of knocked him out with magic. Expelliarmus! Stupefy! Yeah, pretty much. Same thing, well, Expelliarmus knocks you on your ass, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Which it wasn't supposed to when that spell was created, but that's for another review. Yes. So, uh, effectively they right have... Right flash of light, and then Gwen's voice, Marty, we have a problem! Yeah, so, effectively, um, she reveals to him by having him wake up from unconsciousness like 80 feet in the air on a broomstick... 
that she is in fact a witch and does magic, and that's why she's been all mysterious and hiding shit from him through the whole school year. <clears throat> uh, the Halloween festival comes about here, and they money brings up the haunted house with magic and everything, and she confirms to Cody that yes, I am a witch. That was real. You weren't dreaming. Uh, and all seems to go well, except, uh, although they the humans seem to think the haunted house is lame because it's not scary and the ghosts don't say boo or anything like that. I mean, really, Monty, who ever heard of a ghost saying boo? Anyway, uh, until Edgar Dalloway shows up and basically brings all the shit in the haunted house to life, real uber scary, and chases everybody the hell out and starts blasting magic everywhere and basically wrecking the joint, starts fires, giant skeleton monster, etc. And every time Aggie and Marty try to use a spell to stop it, it just makes it worse. It was funny, she tried to make the skeleton um, smaller and go away, and it just made it bigger. Mars was like, and here bring comes my next point of bone of contention with this movie. That was so funny. The, the, the <laughs> fact, <laughs> yes, it was. But the fact that the previous two movies very firmly established that when all else fails, combine powers because when their magic is combined, they kind of can't be stopped. And what is the one thing they don't do when they realize, oh, hey, our spells aren't working? Um, yeah, you're coming back to back with your grandmother. Combine your powers, you fucking idiot. It's like, okay, Edgar Dalloway is powerful. I doubt he could stop the both of you if you combined your magic. But did they try that? No. No, they just gave up. I'm like, really? Did you forget you established that they, that witches could combine magic? Let uh, our I powers swear. combine. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that was, that was literally the crutch of the first two movies was them combining their powers. And... The fact that when they're together, they can't be stopped. Marnie even says it at the end of the second movie. And then conveniently in the third one, Marnie forgets she ever said that. Yep. It's like, oh my God. No, we're just going to give up because we suck. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. It's like, okay, we're going to lay down now. Finger poke of doom. <laughs> so, it, it, it did, Jim. It felt like a finger poke of doom to me. Fair enough. So the Halloween carnival continues as Edgar Dalloway... Re- Basically wreaks havoc all over the place. And eventually, um, I, I guess they went into the haunted house. And uh, basically, the creatures are, are all uh, chased into the haunted house, being revealed as you know all this whatever. Uh, basically, um, the prince, principal finally get riles them into an angry mob, saying that they're evil creatures and we got to kill them and get them out of here. So they chase them into the haunted house, and where they finally collapse on the floor after being chased, and the mob surrounds them. Uh, at which point they're like, yeah, get out of here, get out of here, freak. So they're taunting them, and Edgar Dalloway appears and announces, well, it's very obvious that humans have not changed. Therefore, you lose, Barney. And he's like, no, you're wrong. She's like, no, you're wrong. Humans have changed. Yeah. Really. He's got that glass door, too. He just, like, appears and disappears. Yeah, he's got a cool, he's got a cool evil door. I like that. <laughs> he's like, Really? But how can you say that when they don't even know, you know, the real you? So I'm uh, sorry, but you lose. And really lame ass spell that I cannot remember the name of. And he takes their magic. And that's when they collapse. They don't collapse until after their magic okay. is taken. So. Which brings me to yet another thing that is wrong with this movie. He supposedly takes the Cromwell magic, right? All of the Cromwell magic, right? That's right, Marcus. All of the Cromwell magic. If that's the case, then how come Dylan didn't collapse when the... Well, his magic could have been not as strong. Sure. Unless taken when, away. when the magic is taken, you collapse. Dylan is a Cromwell. He has Cromwell magic, which was evidenced in the first two movies. He should have collapsed with the rest of them. But I think the reason, the only reason he didn't collapse is because his magic, because his strong, like, feeling against it um like he had less magic so taking less away and because it got taken away he wasn't as affected by it the other thing too is how the hell did gwen get back i don't know because because the magic was taken before she came back so technically speaking if all the cromwell magic was taken she would have had no way of getting back from where she went because she would have had no magic magic that's how she got back 
<laughs> but the impossible impossibility magic. No, but once she said the witch's glass had found Cassie, Cassie did have magic. Yeah, except if you see when they come back, it's Gwen leading the way through the portal, so therefore she's the one that cast back. Not necessarily. If Cassie would have gotten them out of the witch's glass, they're just coming over from Halloween Town. Maybe, but still. Lack of continuity. Boom. Anyway. So, effectively, um, their magic is taken by Edgar Dalloway, who announces that now this, this portal to no world ever should have existed. And now, with my newfound powers, it never will again. And he summons a big brick wall that bricks over the door and seals it permanently in all oh, sadness. And they cry and everything. And meanwhile, they realize that he's right. How are we ever going to, you know, see if they accepted you if you didn't show them who you really were? So all the Halloween Town kids strip off their uh, outer vestments, as it were. And no, 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 no. No, Cody steps forward first. Oh, yes. And right. is, like, trying to help Marnie. And he turns around, and he's like, you people should be ashamed of yourself. They're, these are your friends. Regardless of what they look like on the outside, you've gotten to know these people. You know what they are like on the inside, even if you've never seen them. How the hell can you be so callous? What is wrong with you people? Yeah, pretty much. And that's when the Halloween Town people pull off their their little disguises and stuff. And one guy's like, you know, he's right. The werewolf was one is was the best. Was it fullback or running back? Whatever. Yeah, half halfback. He's like, half I don't know one. what a werewolf is like in real life, but Pete's the best halfback we ever had. Yeah. And you may continue the story, Mr. Yes. Phoenix. So they all reel themselves, and uh, even uh, Principal Flanagan, who it was pointed out just prior, who attempted to help Aggie when she fell down, was pointed out by Dalloway, you were just trying to offer her up to an angry mob. And uh, he takes off the little iron dagger ring. is like, this never really fit anyway. And he throws it away. And uh, conveniently, Marty's like, so... You really think humans haven't changed, and it's revealed that they actually activated a witch's glass before this whole thing went down, showing everyone in Halloween Town just how much humans have changed, and they're willing to accept these creatures. And the door is immediately violently blasted back open with Edgar Dowley flying through the brick wall and landing on his ass. And Mars like, yeah, welcome back. And when he gets up, he's like, he's like hey, all of Halloween Town just saw what happened here. They know humans have changed. Which means, I, 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 before this happens, Gwen and, uh, and Cassie run through the portal, having been found, as does uh, Swamp Kid. And they all run through the portal to uh, find everybody. Gwen finally having found the right witch's glass to free Cassie. Which means, was it, was it Magicus return him or something lame like that? And basically, they, the Cromwells take back their magic and train Dalloway's in the process. At which point, Dalloway's like, no, this cannot be. I No. Uh, I will not allow this. But we will, and the remainder of the Halloween Town Council, including a forearm dude, a pumpkin head dude, and a mummy, and another one, who we didn't really see much of, appear and say, it, it's very clear, Edgar, that these humans are far more tolerant than you led us to believe. Also, it should be pointed out that when Edgar Dalloway leaves, he's like, come on, son, let's go. At which point, Ethan turns around, walks over to Marnie, and basically tells his father to fuck off. Yeah, he's like, no, you should have done this to my friends, like... Such a disappointment. So, the Hollywood Town Council is like, they're more good than you led us to believe. If they are willing to give us a chance, we should be willing to return the favor. And Eddie was like, no, I absolutely forbid it. And Pumpkin Dudes, then we will consider this your resignation. <laughs> and they magic him into the witch's glass and trap him there, strip him of his magic, what if he had any left. And thus, everybody celebrates that we still gotta put on a Halloween carnival. Happy Halloween! And the Halloween carnival goes off without a hitch. People like yeah, it. And people... the council was nice enough to rebuild the haunted house for them before they left. Yeah. So the the, the uh, haunted house is rebuilt. Uh, a whole ton of people from Halloween Town come over to celebrate with the humans because they live in peace now. There's an upbeat pop song for the soundtrack, which is important. Marnie flies off with Cody. Marnie flies off with Cody on the broomstick romantically. And the movie ends. And Aggiego gets her BBC. Mm-hmm. Thus, Halloween Town High ends, and the final outing of Kimberly J. Brown as Marnie, the final outing of Emily Rosk as Sophie, and the final film that one might consider to be halfway decent is over. I don't know about that, but 
we'll talk about that. And uh, okay. first one was clearly worse, even though this one didn't need to exist. Like it didn't offend my existence. Fair enough. <laughs> it offended mine. This one was the worst of the four movies for me. So, uh, Stacey, are you are you saying that for the first time it doesn't exist? I would prefer it not exist. Um, I prefer the fourth one just be what from everybody's memory everywhere. Nah. Like freaking George Lucas and Howard the Duck. Ha. Fair enough. So overall, yeah, comments on Halloween Town High, positive, negative. What does everybody think? Halloween Town High was terrible. It was absolutely atrocious. It, it, it had no continuity whatsoever. It completely shat on everything that came before it, and it comp- the cast. I was like, no, just mm-hmm. you're burying half the cast at this point. Yes. Fuck you. Oh, and she also mentioned at the end of the film that having sparked a bit of a romance, Dylan meets with um, I don't recall her name, but the girl who's actually troll a girl. troll. And effectively, they uh, they had been some issue. Uh, they had sort of had a thing for each other until she had initially revealed her real self, and Dylan kind of freaked out and offended her. And they started trying to, you know, make it back to them. And they're like, you know, maybe we're willing to give it a chance. And they're about to kiss when when the troll's like, I can't. It's just too gross. She's like, Thank God, friends, friends. And they walk off together happily, holding hands. That's how I imagine like um, uh, James with the girl. Like, oh, I can't kiss a girl. Ew, gross. Don't be friends. And then like that's how I imagine it all with James Phoenix relationship. Uh huh. That also reminds me of one other thing I had a problem with. with, well, with me, and that was one thing. And also, then uh, we see that Aggie with Principal Flanagan, who asks her to stay on at the school. She says, "Oh, I don't know. Something will have to be done about the athletic department." I mean, who ever heard of field hockey without flying monkeys? Hmm. Yep. This brings me to one other thing I had a problem with. Dylan is a warlock. Yes, he's trying to swear off the magic, but he's shown in the other, the fir- previous two movies he has magic power and decent magic power at that. And it usually comes when he's emotional, when shits hit the fan, and he's basically – for those who are familiar with Dragon Ball Z, he's the Gohan of the group. He's weak until he, he has to go through something. Then he becomes, like, awesome. Except in this movie where when shit hits the fan, he goes and runs and hides. I'm like, where's your magic, dude? You're a fucking warlock, even if you don't think you are. When when you're like siblings, you know, your sister and your grandmother and this girl that you have the hots for is threatened. Hello, your warlock powers should emerge like it is in the first two movies. But no, they forgot he was ever a warlock. I'm like, no, you fucking suck. Give me Sophie. At least she'll use her magic. Right. Yeah, this movie's just terrible. It just Disney because, just forgot what it established, and that's the worst thing you could do, is that it forgot what it established before it. It could have been worse. It could have been Halloween Town 4. I liked Halloween Town 4. Did you say you love it? No, I said I liked it. Uh... Well, we're going to get there. So with that, with that that's Halloween Town High. Uh, it should also be mentioned uh, early on that this was, this film established uh, actresses Alessa Rulin and Luca Scorbillo, uh on the Disney Channel to a point, um, both of whom later became well-known for their roles in the High School Musical series, a reason why Lucas Scorbillo's character Ethan becomes a far more prominent character in the next film. Skinny bitch. Hmm. 